I'm on vacation playing for tips. That's all I'm doing. And, no vacation. Uh, well, it's a two-week vacation. It's turned into three months. Well, as, have you, can you imagine the doing a job that you enjoy? You're doing that you're right now, so I don't have to talk to you about it. So it's like, you're, it's like what you're doing. What are we doing? You're on vacation, and you're working vacation, right? Exactly. Same here. Yeah, same thing. So how did it come about, though? How did it happen? A friend of mine told me I should go here and, and scare him with my piano talent, and I've done so. Okay. How'd you, uh, how'd you break into the scene? I physically walked the quarters during a tornado watch while it was raining, while everybody's pansy asses were sitting underneath shelter when I went out and got a gig in five hours at Ralph and Kaku's, which I got fired for by a corporate weasel because I played too well. Welcome to New Orleans. Who's the corporate weasel? You don't need to give a name, but tell uh, us about The it. one that never had the balls to talk to me that wrote a report that said I played uh, too interesting for the culinary experience. But see, I was overqualified to play a dining room, so that's what it is. Okay, you so know. where'd you go from there? Would Elvis do a dining room? <laughs> oh, I don't know, Ramada Inn, a little bistro. I've, I've played like every place in town. And okay. The World Trade Center, I'm going to be doing happy hour from 5 to 7 there. Okay. And my street name is Catfish. Catfish? Because I'm a scavenger, How'd, right. nibbling on the toes of the millionaires. <laughs> nice, nice. What kind of people do you meet these gigs? Uh, this whole spectrum. It's a gumbo. You know, it's New Orleans. It's all kinds of, I mean, high, low, rich, illiterate, extremely illiterate, homeless, you know, the whole spectrum, all mixed, you know, it's all like, you know, retards like you, too, you know. You. Retards, yeah. Um, so where'd you learn to play? When did you start playing? <laughs> oh, I was 10 and I started banging on, and and I never, I never got dun dun dun. I just did a lent, did a lent, did a lent, did a lent, like ten thousand times, and I'm, I haven't stopped, you know. Okay. Where, where was the piano that you started playing on? In the house. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Upright, baby grand. Oh, it was a big, baby grand upright. Yeah. Council. You get in this range, they get so big. There's a the t distinction between a baby grand is the same string length as a big, huge upright. They're the same exact piano. Oh, so it's a big it is a yeah, it's the smallest grand piano in a box, you know, because that fancy shape is just marketing, you know. You can string them this way on an angle, or you can string them way out. You know, they stick out further. You know, it looks like you got a big old piano. It's gonna impress the people for tea, you know. But uh, we like, you know, in a practical sense, uh, electric piano is the way to go now. Why's that? Because Yamaha has got new technology. They've got a thing called a portable grand. It's a digital grand piano. When you hit a key, you're hearing a recording of the dude playing a grand piano. It's playing right back at you. You're hearing the grand piano itself. So it's, I mean, I should be a rep from Yamaha. <laughs> so you don't mind that? You don't mind the sort Mine, I prefer it. You can put really? it on your back and it weighs eight pounds. And you play on the street. You can play in a millionaire club. You can play anywhere. And it, it is a grand piano. Take one jack into the sound system. The entire sound system is playing the grand piano they can't distinguish because it's indistinguishable because it is a perfect recording of a grand piano whoa so now it's it's been done you know that's so i use that too cool. you know yeah I love Jesus. Um, where's your favorite place you played wherever there's a piano that's in tune that's really anywhere yeah. i'm playing all over the place yeah yeah i don't have a favorite i actually play uh, in the streets probably my favorite really? but it doesn't pay but it's a lot of fun see the drunks come cartwheeling down royal street you know, guys get out of jail, they're like ecstatic, I'm out of jail, and knock my piano over. I mean, it's a little dangerous. You know, you never know what's going to roll up on you, but it's uh, it's fun. What kind of reaction did you get? People dig it? Oh, uh, something like how people reacted to Jesus. <laughs> how so? Or Bob give Dylan. Me an, give me an image. Well, they're, they're, they're in awe. They, they can't believe their ears. So, you know, that's on them. Okay. Maybe they need to get a better record collection. So do you, talk, do you teach yourself or what? What's the deal? McCoy Tyner taught me by ear. Okay. I listen to McCoy Tyner CDs. And Keith Jarrett and Herbie Hancock. Herbie Hampton Hawes. Interesting. How many Art Tatum out? for a minute, and I don't like uh, Oscar Peterson. No, so there. Cool. <laughs> so uh, where do you see yourself going with this? Are you happy to doing what you're doing? It's all a vehicle to help the homeless. I'm making uh, my fortunes I've made and lost, and keep I invest in helping homeless people. I'd like to get with some powerful people, which I'm in the process of doing. I've done some TV shows and public relations, and we want to educate these folks and teach them how to play piano so I can step off, and I don't know, they'll all be my bitches. I'll work them, 
and I'll get ten percent off the piano players. I'll put twenty piano players in town, and then that's be like I would be considered like cool in this yeah. town if I did that. So you think you'd like doing that better than playing yourself? Well, I I I'm not worried about me anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm out to help some people that uh, so they crack their heads are cracked for some stupid reason, and if you talk to them for ten minutes, they won't be homeless anymore because you just gave them one little, you know, therapy. So I'm working with some people in the city for that. That's that's my real fun. Really? Is trying to change this. Uh, uh, lock them up in cages, uh, treatment of homeless people. I'm a teacher of music, that's what I do, and uh, I'm using that a skill to uh, try to help some homeless people. That's about it right now. Cool. What made you start? Like, was there like an experience that made you want to help homeless? Or My van burned and I experienced this state myself. I said, this sucks. And, but I got out of it quick, real quick. And I started thinking, what about these guys that don't get out of it real quick? They kind of, you know, ah, uh, you know? So it's about that, finding that point where someone gives up hope and you reach them, bring them up to a point of uh, maybe there is a reason to, you know, be, exist, because they're just in non-existence, you know. And around here it's too easy just to sit in the corner people give you five dollars because you look so awful. I couldn't get a tip. They say he looks like a professional, they won't tip me, they say he's a con artist, you know. Rolling some dirt and then you start getting money, you know, so they get rewarded for being down. You know? So that's not good. Yeah. So next time you see a guy like that, just yeah. tell him to snap out of it. <laughs> and we'll punctuate that with a sound effect. Mm -hmm. Very nice. There you go. That's a good ending. Thank yeah. you, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. <laughs>